Hey guys, it's Katie here with Life in Mundane and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are gonna be talking about the Happy Cheetah Reading Program. I unboxed this for you guys just a few months ago and I had so many people that wanted to know more. They wanted to know how did it actually work for my kids and what did I think of it? So I'm excited to bring you guys my review of this curriculum and to share with you guys not just my personal opinions on it, but to also share with you guys a few of the pros, maybe some things to consider, some of the cons, and to answer some of the frequently asked questions that I received after doing that unboxing. So let's get started. Okay, first I'm gonna start with just a brief introduction. Happy Cheetah Reading is a new program. It just came out this year, but the methods used in this program, and Dr. Karen, who is the author of this program and creator of this program, has been practicing these methods and these ways of teaching kids to read for decades. And so this is definitely not a new method. It is just um, a new curriculum, and I really appreciated that. I have tried many different curriculums. I have looked at many options and I just, we were kind of hitting a wall with a few of my kids and I was just ready for something new and fresh. And this is exactly what this is. It has a workbook for your getting ready workbook. It has one for level one, level two, level three, and level four. If you guys want to see the entirety of what comes in the, um, the box, including all of the readers and the flashcards and the letter tiles and all of that stuff, if you want to see all of that, be sure to check out my unboxing video. You guys can find it up here in the link or down in the description below. Um, it will also show you kind of a flip through of the book as well. So I'm hoping that that will be really helpful to you guys. I was impressed by the level of independence, by the structure. It's just really, really different than things I've seen out there. And I really, it worked well for our kiddos, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start by answering some of the frequently asked questions that I got about this program first, just so you guys have all the information up front. I had several people ask me, there's all these books. Is this supposed to be, you know, pre-k or kindergarten through fourth grade or what is the grade division slash when should you be doing these books you have to understand that this was written with um both your neurotypical kids and your remedial readers in mind which means that um i'm going to give you the suggested schedule but absolutely you can deviate from that and we are personally for this program and i'll explain a little bit about that here in a second but what is the suggested usage well the suggested usage is that you would actually do the pre-workbook and level one in kindergarten then you would move on to book two and three for first grade and then you would move on to book four in second grade. Now, I will say something about the second grade, even though this is a thicker book than some of the other ones, um, they realized that in order for it to be a complete second grade curriculum for reading, they felt like it needed a little bit more. So since my unboxing, they have now added some fun readers to go along with this and not the readers. I mean, they have these readers still too that I love, but they actually have just regular books that uh, children's books that they include with this package. So after you complete this, it has a guide for you of when and how to introduce those books to your kids and they should be able to work through doing that reading aloud for you um, to make this a complete second grade curriculum. So that was really important information I just thought I would share. Now, I said that we are using it for our remedial learners um, as well. I have one that's doing beginning and then one that's doing remedial. And you guys may even be wondering, you just unboxed this two months ago. How can you give me your review? But let me explain. Because I'm working with a remedial learner, my fourth grade son really has been struggling in reading. We've hit a wall and it wasn't just hitting a wall in learning. It was also mentally he had hit, hit a wall. He just, he was breaking down the second he saw the long word lists or the, you know, super complicated rules or anything like that. So we needed to step back and step away and find a different approach. And so we came at this program and started at level one. I did not start at the pre-reading um, level. I felt like that would be a little too young for him, but I did start at level one with him. Um, and being in fourth grade, he is able to complete this much faster pace. And I'll talk a little bit more about our pace here in a little bit, but he is actually almost fully completed. He's, he's pretty darn close to being completed with book one. So I felt like I could come to you guys now and share that review because I have seen a good taste of this program. Um, from beginning to end in one book at least. And then I've also done extensive looking into all the other lessons so I can share with you guys more. The next question, 
is this just a reading program or does it include other subjects? Okay, that is a great question. I had no clue. I assumed when I received this box that it was just a reading curriculum. I had read that there was some handwriting involved, but didn't really think much of it. This is actually a fairly complete language arts curriculum, especially if you consider their suggested ages, and I'll explain. But basically, um, it includes definitely adequate handwriting for grade level, absolutely, and I'll show you guys that. For each and every lesson, that they do they have their reading stuff over here for each and every lesson they have copy work that they're going to be working on in the younger grades they're practicing working on letters and working on copy work and then in the older grade they're just doing copy work um so absolutely has adequate um introduction to handwriting and practice with handwriting okay it has spelling there is a lot of spelling in here the pre-reading actually even has some gentle introduction to spelling um in here and then you definitely get a decent amount of spelling if not like every other day focusing on spelling in the other books. So definitely an adequate amount of spelling, obviously an adequate amount of reading. It has a gentle introduction to grammar and I really appreciated this. I did not expect this at all. And it's been a fun blessing to all of us. It has introduced things like punctuation and working on capitalization and working on um, some introduction to okay names need to be capitalized because they're proper nouns that kind of thing not necessarily at least to the point that we are at a lot of description of understanding why those are the cases or defining terms there's no diagramming sentences or anything like that however when you were talking about the suggested usage for this of kindergarten to second grade I personally, as well as many professionals, don't feel that that's actually super necessary to introduce until more of a third grade level. Um, and part of that is just because it's good to have a good base foundation. You want to have good, strong skills in reading and in spelling and stuff like that before you throw on a whole other layer of grammar. So um, just take that for what it's worth. Because um, I'm using it with my remedial learner, I am doing additional grammar because he's in fourth grade and it's not adequate for fourth grade. Um, for my younger daughter who is using starting at the prep work, that's fine. I'm totally good with this being her grammar. So just if that kind of helps you decide. Also with writing, there are writing sheets in there. They are more, um, they are optional and they are more of a free write um, thing. So you'll have maybe a prompt, maybe not. Um, actually, I don't know that there are any prompts now that I think about that, but um, it'll say, okay, now it's your turn, create something a sentence, a paragraph, whatever they're comfortable with, and draw a picture of it. It's optional. They really, really are all about ending every single lesson with a smile, not tears, not frustration. So if it's going to be a cause of frustration, just skip it. They also say if your child is not to the point where writing is easier to them, they can dictate it to you and you can write it out and they can draw it. Um, and it's been fun. My son loves to do those. Like he loves to do things when he has no prompts, when he has free reign to do whatever he wants. He enjoys um, getting to do that. But I wouldn't say, you know, for first and second grade, that, that might be fine for writing because, again, you may not want to introduce more um, structured writing to later grades for my fourth grader, that's not enough um, writing instruction, but that's okay. So anyways, just some things to keep in mind for you guys. Um, also, people wanted to know, did it actually include everything I needed? Guys, I kid you not, the only thing I had to add to that giant box that I unboxed was a pencil. Okay, a pencil and I decided, I didn't need to, but I decided to add a pencil pouch to it. And part of that is because in a pencil pouch, just the 98 cent Walmart pencil pouch, I can fit all the letter tiles, I can fit the flashcards, I can fit two readers, and I can fit the, fit the um, dry erase markers. So it just makes it easier for me to hold stuff. So I can just, when it's time to do his reading, I grab his book and this. And if his lesson calls for the magnet board, then I'll grab that too. And that's all I need to do his lesson. And we even throw a pencil in here too. So it's very easy, very grab and go. Okay, done with the frequently asked questions, moving on to the pros and cons. And obviously you've heard some of those within this, but I do want to say a huge pro to this, like my son's favorite part, one of my favorite parts is it's super well organized and it's broken into sections. When you have a child that is overwhelmed easily, or maybe has ADD or, you know, whatever has problems breaking things into chunks. This does this for you guys. I'm gonna just show you one of the pages in the first book. Okay. I'm gonna show you one of these pages and what you guys are gonna see is that it has a read section. When you finish the section, you're gonna check it off. Then it has a magnetic letter section. When you finish the section, you're gonna check it off. Game time, 
read again, think and do, copy work. Each one of those has their own checkbox for each and every activity. And for my son, it felt very accomplishing to go, oh, I only have this much more left. Like that was when we were doing his other reading curriculum, that was constantly his question. Mom, how many, more, how many more pages do I have left? How much more time do I have to keep doing this? Or whatever, however we were measuring that. And so for them, having the checkboxes, he knows exactly where he's going and how he's doing this. Um, and that has helped a lot. It's helped relieve anxiety. It's helped relieve frustration because he just knows like, Hey, I've got to get to this point. We're not stopping before that. So I might as well just have a good attitude, which so far attitude has not been a huge deal. He really does love this program, but I feel like if you've never had any attitude issues, you probably haven't been using the program long enough because no matter what kids are going to have an off day and we definitely have had some off days where he has kind of bucked me on it but when i point out again hey once you're done with your checklist you're done he's all of a sudden more motivated so just a big pro on that i also love the level of repetition in this book um i don't even know how to explain it to you guys this is not a phonics based program at all um which is very different for us everything else we've tried has been more phonics based but we've also had lots of struggles so i think it was time to switch switch your method for example they have the readers there's two readers for the level one and your child is going to actually the first thing they're going to do is they're going to listen to you read about half the book and they're very clear in the instructions and i do like this part they're very clear that they want you to read the material to your student 24 hours before they actually start trying to read it themselves because it needs time to connect in the brain we want to attach information to hooks your children already have um, instead of just pulling all this reading stuff out of the sky out of nowhere we want to take something they've already heard and they're familiar with and attach it to it so this is a great way to do that by reading 24 hours in advance we read those six, I don't remember, four or five, six stories, and we read them to them out loud, and then we'll start getting into the lessons to diving into it. But that's a side note. So each day your child's gonna start out by reading some stories. At the beginning it starts small, but by the end of it, you're gonna be reading approximately four stories a day. Before you freak out, or before your child freaks out, I should say, the stories are very short, at, at least in the level one reader, okay? Even at the end, we're talking about one sentence, all right? This made it so much more manageable for my son. He could really, really handle it when it was chunked like this. Even though it was more pages and more stories, he could handle it because it, each page was very manageable. Okay, so they're going to start out by reading those books and they're gonna read these at least five times before they move on like completely to a new story. And I love that because there is a lot of repetition. Now each book, each picture, excuse me, each page in each book has the sentence and it has a picture to help illustrate the sentence. This is great. Like we use pictures, we use words to help us gain context. So there's nothing wrong with having those pictures. However, we tend to, um, kids can rely heavily on those or solely on those if we never read those words outside of that context. And this is what I love about the program. So after we do the reading time and he reads his several stories to me, we're gonna do magnet letter time. And it tells me exactly which letters I'm pulling out and I'm making these words. Guess where these words came from? From these stories. I'm gonna make those on the letter board. He's gonna read them to me on the letter board. Then after that, we're gonna to go to game time and we're gonna grab some of the flashcards, not use them as flashcards. We are going to use them as games and they have a whole list of suggestions of games that you can play in the back. His favorite is to take all of these and like lay them out and then make funny sentences with them, which is fantastic practice. Um, so anyways, we are going to use these cards again with words that he's already read in the book. And then he's going to reread one of these stories. He's going to reread it. And the nice thing here is there is one illustration and this is the entire story, everything that's in the story for Papa. Um, and so he doesn't get the picture prompts for each one of these. So it's tons and tons of repetition. Then you go on here and you have a think do section. And the, what I loved about this too, I will say, is that it's organized similarly. It does change a little bit in the book, but for the most part, it's organized the same way every time. So it cuts down the amount of instruction time. It increases the amount of time that he can do things independently, which is always a pro. And it takes the opportunity to um, get him really working on a, pro on a particular um, 
subject or particular topic. So here he's going to circle the sentence that sounds right. This starts out pretty simple. Like they throw in a funky word to make like, or they jumble all the words and they say, you know, Papa fish likes or Papa likes to fish. Which one sounds right? You know, it's really obvious. But then as you go through the book, it gets a little trickier. The sentences will maybe just be Papa likes to camp versus Papa like to camp. And you have to catch that it didn't have that S on the end. So it does get trickier as it goes. It also has rhyming section. So he is gonna circle the three words that rhyme. Later in the book, um, or here even, you can see the next section is that he's gonna underline all the vowels. So this is helping us notice our vowels. Um, and then here he's gonna circle the sentence that looks right. These are identical sentences with just few tricky things. There may be missing a comma. One has an exclamation point while one has a period and you have to figure out which one's appropriate. I really wasn't sure how this was gonna go. He loves this part and I have watched him apply this stuff in his own personal writing and activities like more than I ever have. We have talked about, he's in fourth grade, we have talked about we capitalize the first letter of a sentence, we don't capitalize the other letters more times than I can count. And yet the child still continually, I mean, he, he is on the spectrum, to be fair. Um, he has some struggles, but he continually, like every other word is capital letter and it drives me bananas. And finally, after using this program, he is starting to catch himself doing that and going, wait, that's not a name. That's not the beginning of a sentence. That doesn't need to be capitalized. And I'm so happy and I'm so thankful for Happy Cheetah for helping me with that because I was about to lose my mind. Then he'll have where he'll just copy some of the letters of the alphabet, just again, working on that form. And then he'll copy a sentence. And guess where that sentence comes from? From our story. So they're reading it, they're building it, they are playing with it, they're reading it again, they're doing some worksheet things all with words that came from that story, and then they're writing it. So it's super multi-sensory. And if you have a kid that needs either that multi-sensory approach and or needs a lot of repetition, this is a program that I think you should consider. And I will show you guys real fast. I forgot to show you what the spelling looks like. Um, so with this, they've got every other day when they get towards like the middle of the book turns into you have a heavy reading day and then you'll have a little bit of reading where they'll read those readers again but you won't do all the games and all of that and instead they're going to do a spelling day the spelling words are at the bottom of the page across from it okay and you're going to call it out and your child's going to put it in order little pro tip here here then here then here not down and it does matter um and part of the reason why it matters is they do this awesome thing which i'm I'm so happy about this. They they shade in anytime there is a B or a D in a word, they shade it in so your child traces it. Um, a lot of struggles with B and D reversal. And um, we have fought this for years and it's just been really, really hard. And so what I love about this is that he can spell a word, every single word he's been able to spell without a problem. He's done great. Um, but when they give him that, and so this word would be fib, he can just, he doesn't have to stress about which way does the B go, which way, he knows. Okay, it's F-I, and then he has to do it. As he is tracing it, he has to say the sound, fib. And I've noticed, he's still reversing them, but I have noticed him catching himself more due to the fact that he's never prompted ever in this program list so far to write a B or a D without getting some help in it. Now, like in level three, you'll have the word boxes so they'll know how many letters, but you will not have that shaded in. Um, they did not um, shade in the Bs and Ds. That's just at the beginning level. But I really appreciated those little touches like that. Like here is a passage from the level three. You can see it's obviously quite a bit more than one sentence per page. Um, and even level four is even more so. I don't know how much spelling and things are in level four. I would be happy if you guys wanna see individual flip throughs of each of these levels, I can do that. Um, I would be more than happy to just drop it down in the comments. Also, if you'd like to see a, um, do a lesson with us and have me show you guys exactly how the lesson goes, drop that down in the comments because we can totally do that as well. All right, so what about the cons? I know this video has been a little bit longer, I'm sorry, but I wanted to make sure I gave everything it's, it's due justice. Cons, um, price point, it's a little bit on the high side. Um, that being said, very comparable to what other reading pro programs are out there. Um, I would say it's very mid-range for what a lot of reading programs are out there. Um, 
but it may be a little bit out of your budget because it is consumable. That being said, I think personally for me, reading is one of those areas where I feel like it's worth my investment because reading affects every other subject that they're ever gonna do. They can't get far in history and science and other areas unless they can read. They can't get far in life unless they can read. So I personally am okay with the investment um, for my children uh, and we've always paid more for our reading programs. So that's not an abnormal concept to me, but I do wanna just mention that it is more in that higher bracket, um, but I still think it's affordable and doable for your kiddos. And when you buy the set, you buy the set and it comes with, you know, the book and it comes with the readers and all those things, it, but you can buy just the workbooks as an additional, um, as an additional resource. So that is helpful that you don't have to rebuy the whole set. Um, you can save money by buying the complete set and you'll get everything that I got in my unboxing video. Um, and so that can also be a way to help a little bit um, with cost. So, so that I just wanted to mention that. I wouldn't feel right unless I mentioned it. The second thing is I wish there was a little more instruction because they market it so heavily as for um, your neurotypical kids, as well as for your remedial learners, for your want kids who are really struggling, who are maybe above grade level. I wish they had some kind of pamphlet or guideline, and maybe they do now, but when I got it, they didn't. Some kind of pamphlet or guideline that gave me an idea of a suggested schedule. Yes, it, it's per kid, and I've been teaching for a while, so I'm definitely used to like following cues of my child, but I think sharing, like, what are some of the cues? How do you know, like, definitely don't do more than four lessons at a time or make sure you're reading each story at least five or six times or like giving just a little bit more guidance. Um, we figured out our groove for us. We started out just doing the first um, probably 10 lessons, um, maybe not even 10, maybe the first week. We did one lesson a day just for my son to be able to get used to the format because it was so drastically different from what we were doing and also for him to be like building confidence and going oh this is easy i can do this um and then we moved into doing two lessons a day um that's gotten us going really really fast every once in a while we can throw in a third or maybe a fourth um like a, not a fourth but we can throw in like a third lesson in the day if it's something a lot easier so um we're getting through the program a lot faster. Our plan is to continue on with this program. That is how much we like it. This is not just a, a one and done thing. We are planning on continuing this program and he will probably complete, um, he will complete level one mid-July. Um, and then we will probably go ahead and have him do two, three, and four next year. Um, and he might even get beyond that as well. But maybe by the end of the year, we'll just see his pace. We're taking it very much at his pace. For us, two lessons was perfect because there was that heavy reading day and because there was that spelling day, we weren't, we were overlapping, but we weren't like duplicating the same thing. And for him, it's better to take in smaller amounts of information repetitively over time than it is to like pile it all on at once. So that's what we figured out for him. But I wish there would have been just a little bit more guidance and direction on that part. Um, everything you need is in here. This is the teacher book. This is the workbook. Um, if you need something, you know, they're going to tell you what to do. I, I think for me, the only thing that was missing and, you know, it did come with a lot of pamphlets. Um, and there is a book that came with it as well. I have not been able to get to all of those and maybe that's included in there, but what I would have loved to see at the beginning, I would have liked to see a little bit more of a scope and sequence. Again, they've now updated the website to have a little bit of more of that in the description, but I would have loved to see it in the book or maybe just an insert that they could put in there so I could easily look at and see, okay, like I wasn't sure in the pre-reading, should I, um, we start out by writing letters. I'll show you the first lesson, okay? So the first lesson, we're just starting out by writing letters. Now it gets more and more as you go, right? But it starts by writing letters. I wasn't sure was I supposed to also introduce the sound at that point? Granted, my daughter already knew the sounds, um, so I didn't have to stress about that too much. She already knew the sounds. She actually already knew how to write most letters, but I wanted her to go back and get as much practice as she could in. Um, but I wasn't sure, are we just, because some programs introduce just the letters or just the sounds first, and then they add in the others later. So I wasn't really sure at what point I was supposed to be adding that in. Um, so I would have just just appreciated a little bit of a scope and sequence so I had an idea of if and when I was supposed to do that. Oh, I love the program. 
I really, I'm excited to continue using it. I could definitely give my stamp of approval and say, this is good. I just want you to be aware about some of those factors. If this has been helpful to you guys, please leave a comment, share it, give it a thumbs up. It's super helpful to our channel. It just helps us to grow and reach more moms. Hopefully we can be an encouragement to more people and um, it would just mean a lot to be sure to stick around on the channel. I'm going to be having a video coming out Saturday on three tips on homeschooling third graders and July is going to be packed full of homeschool reviews and pulling out different curriculum, showing you guys what we're using for the 2020-2021 school year. So be sure to stick around and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.